And this is the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show. For the first time in 49 years, the Rangers organization has pitched triple goose eggs. Three consecutive shutouts for the first time since Eddie Jockerman and Gilles Villemure team for three in a row in 1973. Three nothing the final over the Winnipeg Jets at the Garden. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios, John Giannone, Steve Valiquette. So we've seen in games against the Flyers and the Red Wings and now the Jets three play out the string out of the playoff teams. The Rangers doing enough to win, but also riding some terrific goaltending. That's right. And there's a challenge there because to win in the playoffs, you need to have your D details in order, and some of that really reflects what type of opponent you have in any particular game, and we're seeing it right now. We're seeing games where the opponent really isn't up for the fight because they're playing out the rest of their regular season, but in saying that, it was Shesterkin that stepped up, it was Panarin that stepped up, and Strom that stepped up. Once again, we're talking about the core star players on the team that still rise the tide for the rest of the group. And, you know, it, this game could have gone either way after the first period. Mm -hmm. Really, w was anybody really that engaged? Not really. And it's a lot easier for a non-playoff team to play and get wins in the standings when they don't matter. So that's the danger in playing these games right now. At the same time, you're trying to stay sharp and get ready for the postseason. Did the Rangers manage it well? They did. Did the Stars step up again? They did. And the result is favorable once again. Yeah, and it was a nothing-nothing game into the late stages of the second period. And as you said, there was some angst on the Rangers bench about the way they were playing in that middle period. Gerard Gallant was not happy with what he had seen, told his team, from what I can tell, that they were watching too much. And in fact, when the Rangers scored, courtesy Ryan Strom on the power play, that power play had been on the ice for well more than a minute. And Gerard Gallant had called for a change. The next three forward group were on their feet on the bench waiting to come on the ice. And the Rangers stayed on and they scored. And after they did, Gerard Gallant looked at Ryan Reeves and said, that works. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great insight, yeah. right? Because it takes a lot of skill to play on the Rangers power play. It also takes a lot of smarts when not to get off the yeah. ice. But when you see the play set up, it's interesting to me because this is about the only time Shesterkin doesn't play at the length of the rink tonight. He lets Fox bring it up. And then this is what Panarin did so well. He slows the game right down. Because he slows it down at the offensive blue line, that allows everybody to run their routes to the net with time, with space, and then with spacing enough to be able to get two sticks in behind the defense of Winnipeg, and you've got options. Had Strom let that get through, John, that's going to Kreider for a goal. And look, you're gonna take it, and Ryan Strom has a great game. And once again, I think the leadership of this group, because this group is so serious about still keeping it going and being being attuned to where they need to be sharp going into the postseason, they weren't going to let this game drop and let it just fall by the wayside. There was there was definitely some poignant conversation on the bench and in the locker room. Yeah, and you could see there at the top of the screen as the Rangers came down the ice, the four players on their feet ready to come oh. on the ice. They never got the chance. Strom scored his 18th of the year at that point. Zibanejad added to his career high of 78 points now. Rangers had the lead. It stayed 1-0 midway through the third period, and then a guy who had not scored in his last 12 found an opening and Adam Fox scored the goal, but the yeoman work was done by Artemi Panarin. Panarin is, again, so he commands the game a certain way, and when you command it and you really have ownership over the game, you can speed it up, you can slow it down, but on this play here, I mean, he skates it, John had it down, he skates it the length of two football fields. So we haven't done this before on the show, but we're gonna track the amount of feet that he skates during this shift. And he's always a passing option, which makes him a threat as well as everybody around him because it opens up ice for people. You have to know where Artemi Panarin is on the ice. And as he tracks around, it's a fun thing to keep an eye on. I mean, he's so busy, but you can see it from the early part of this game. He took the first and second shift of the game. And if you remember midway through the first period, laid a heavy check in the corner. He was engaged, John. He yeah. wasn't going to let this one get away. And this isn't a power play. This is five on five. No, this is, <laughs> it looks like yeah. a power play. Yeah. But Fox then settles in. And look, you've got to be an out. You've got to be an out for this guy because he's going to get it to you. A nice screen through. And Fox gets a clean cop who's done a nice job in front. 
adding a compliment, I have to say, adding a compliment to Chris Kreider. Kreider doesn't have to be the only guy in front of the net anymore. It's nice to have somebody to rely on for those hard minutes. And you look at some of the other top teams in the NHL, and you look at Landis Cog, and they've got McKinnon also. They've got two or three guys in Colorado, which is a big reason why they're so successful, yeah. screening the goaltender. Mm -hmm. And listen, Panarin gets 70 assists now. The last Ranger who had 70 assists in a season, Wayne Gretzky. 25 years ago. The only other Rangers who have ever had 70 assists in a season, Leach, who has the record with 80, Zubov, and Messier. That is some esteemed company among all-time great Rangers, and Artemi Panarin now with 70 assists on the season. Strom would add the empty net goal. That would make it 3-0. The only question would be, for the third consecutive game, would the Rangers get the shutout? And Igor Shesterkin would make sure the answer was in the affirmative. Shesterkin leads the league in goals against. He leads the league in save percentage. He's going to end up leading the league in those categories. Will he win the goaltender's triple crown? He's one win behind UC Soros for the league lead now with 36. You left one thing out. He's going to win the Vesna Trophy. That, He's yeah. closing this thing out. Mm -hmm. He's closing it out and look there's been a few weeks here where it's been a little unsteady I'm sure that he wanted to go out in this game and set the tone and let everybody understand that he wasn't just gonna stop the puck he was going to control it and this is a big thing in the playoffs you have to know where he's putting it you see how the Rangers over the last number of weeks have been able to find the puck get it out of the zone there was two plays in the first period where he had to get down and find it himself where it came through him but for the most part, as this game wore on, he was steadier and steadier. Freezing, I, I want to say that he had 11 freezes in this game. And that's a really terrific stat to look at. Who's stopping it and controlling it? And on a lot of tight plays where there wasn't a second chance. These are tough plays, John. You've got to bring that puck in between your elbow and your pants. And he did that on three partial breakaways. Steady, silent like a statue off the release. And I thought as this game wore on, he got better. I mean, he was big in the net. This is a huge save in the third period on a breakaway. He's got the confidence of the group back. And this is a big thing for him going forward because it's been a little unsteady for a little while. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's right at his ship again. And that's where, you know, we know who's driving the bus here. <laughs> and as I had mentioned at the end of the second period, when goaltenders go to their respective dressing rooms and cross, they almost never acknowledge each other. Eric Comrie of the Jets <laughs> patted Shesterkin on the pads after the second period he had, and that kind of speaks to the respect he has around the league.